His care is for women, for the vulnerable. Blasphemy is not harmless. Well, the Pharisees were pretty upset. Sometimes you gotta stir up the water. In The Chosen, there's a pivotal moment involving Simon's betrayal of the Jewish people as he contemplates turning in some fellow fishermen to the Romans. The deleted scene, not mentioned by my brother, reveals Simon's arrangement with Quintus. Imagine if those fishermen had turned against him, seeking retribution. This scenario, nearly depicted in The Chosen, is explored in a deleted scene. It's crucial to understand the limitations faced by the show during Season 1 with constraints in funding, time and resources. Anything you ask, I will do. This deleted scene is the only one from the season, underscoring the challenges of creating extra content. In the deleted scene, Simon encounters Jewish fishermen, who discover his intention to turn them in. The tension builds as they threaten him, suggesting that it would be easier for him to come with them. The confrontation intensifies, hinting at a potential burial at sea to avoid embarrassment. This scene precedes Simon's interactions with Eden and her brothers, leading to a disastrous conversation where he confesses to his wrongdoings. The subsequent events contribute to the unraveling of Simon's world, including a conflict with Andrew about Jesus' presence and the realization that Matthew is following him. This deleted scene, portraying the Jewish fisherman's aggression towards Simon, would have added a layer of intensity to the storyline. However, considering the budgetary constraints and the evolving narrative direction, the decision to exclude this scene aligns with the show's progression. As The Chosen gains more funding and creative opportunities, it may explore such deleted scenes in the future. For now, the focus remains on the show's central biblical accounts, with each season bringing its own unique narrative challenges and resolutions. As we witness the scene unfold, Simon remains confident in the face of the surrounding fishermen, employing his characteristic bravado. He dismisses their threats, emphasizing his fearlessness and even humorously mentioning his nickname, Wide Hands. Eventually, Simon manages to escape, running past Roman soldiers who unintentionally shield him. However, had this deleted scene been included, it would have introduced significant complications for Simon, Andrew and Eden in the subsequent season. While Simon would still resolve his debt and welcome Jesus, a persistent issue would linger. The Jewish fishermen, more concerned with Simon's betrayal intent than his debt, would hold a grudge. This resentment could lead to potential confrontations whenever Simon ventured outside. The fishermen might seek revenge by endangering Simon, kidnapping Eden, or creating nighttime disturbances. The aggression displayed in broad daylight foreshadows potential future troubles. The repercussions extend beyond Capernaum, possibly tracking them to other locations on the Sea of Galilee. Simon's vigilance would be heightened, altering his behavior in every public scene. The weight of Jesus' fish miracle might also be lessened, as Simon's problems would persist, unlike in the original narrative where internal conflicts were swiftly resolved. The central question revolves around who divulged Simon's intentions to the other fishermen. The limited circle of individuals aware of this includes Simon, Andrew, James, John, and Zebedee. The revelation's source carries significant implications for future events, introducing complexities and potential betrayals within the followers of Jesus, especially considering the close friendship between Simon and Zebedee's family. The inclusion of this deleted scene would have introduced a myriad of challenges, altering character dynamics and intensifying conflicts within the storyline, potentially impacting the show's overall narrative coherence. In the subsequent part of the scene, the focus shifts to the aftermath of Simon's confrontation with the Jewish fishermen. There's a discussion about the circumstances and potential betrayers who revealed Simon's intentions. The dialogue unfolds as follows. Concerned about the events, Simon asks, where are we next time? Someone informs him that there are only three ships, most likely Zebedee's, following closely with some soldiers and more fishermen are uncertain, waiting for Simon's arrival to offload. The question arises, how did Simon manage to escape the situation? The response reveals that the boat had an unfortunate accident, partly thanks to the person talking, who lost part of their wife's favored ear. Despite Simon's gratitude, the person emphasizes that Simon chose to deal with Rome. The discussion then delves into potential betrayers, considering two options. 
Firstly, it might be Zebedee who disclosed the information to the fishermen, indicating a significant breach of trust. Simon, having crucial information about Zebedee, prevented the Romans from discovering Zebedee's ship previously. The idea of Zebedee betraying Simon in return seems strange, as it could lead to strained relations between them. Secondly, the suspicion falls on one of Simon's brothers, James or John, as the ones who may have divulged the information to the other fishermen. This scenario would exacerbate the resentment within the followers of Jesus, particularly as the brothers don't own the boats and don't directly employ the fishermen. Their father does. The potential betrayal of one of the brothers would intensify Simon's anger. In this context, the already strained relationship between Simon, James, and John, evident in season two, would become exponentially worse. Simon would have time to reflect on their actions and perceive their betrayal as a significant transgression, distinct from his previous betrayal against the Jewish people. The scene also questions the realism of Simon running past the Romans at the end, given the Roman tendency to swiftly suppress any rowdiness in Capernaum. The original idea involving Matthew's dog saving Simon is mentioned as a humorous anecdote, and the conclusion is drawn that the inclusion of this scene would have made The Chosen a worse show, complicating the narrative without contributing positively. Additionally, the scene's deletion is justified by the potential challenges it would introduce for the writers in resolving these intricate storylines. It's suggested that the writers would need to spend considerably more time untangling these interpersonal conflicts rather than delving into the biblical accounts that audiences are eager to see. In summary, the analysis of this deleted scene underscores the careful balance that the show's creators must maintain between character-driven drama and the portrayal of biblical events. The decision to omit this scene reflects a commitment to preserving the overall narrative flow and prioritizing the storytelling elements that contribute most effectively to the series' success. This in-depth exploration of the hypothetical consequences of the deleted scene offers a nuanced perspective on the intricacies of character dynamics within The Chosen. It highlights the delicate choices that creators make to ensure a compelling and coherent narrative while teasing out potential storylines that could have significantly altered the trajectory of the show. With that being said, in The Chosen, the lead up to Jesus' crucifixion, a pivotal moment in his story is explored in season four. While the crucifixion itself is slated for season six, with the resurrection following in season seven, season four is positioned to lay the crucial groundwork for depicting the passion. Director Dallas Jenkins emphasizes that unlike films such as The Passion of the Christ that vividly portray the graphic crucifixion, The Chosen aims to convey the spiritual anguish of Jesus' followers with greater emotional impact. The focus of season four is expected to increasingly shift towards the disciples' confusion and despair as Jesus willingly embraces his fate. Key storylines, such as Judas' intensifying betrayal and the tragic events involving John and Lazarus, are anticipated to sow seeds of doubt and despair, challenging faith in Jesus' mission. This internal turmoil within the disciples will likely intensify as enemies draw near. While the emotional climax may be reserved for future seasons, season four is poised to compellingly chronicle the rising doubts and pain experienced by the disciples as they approach the culmination of Jesus' earthly journey. The gradual portrayal of internal turmoil in season four sets the stage for a poignant depiction of the disciples' faces, reflecting horror and devastation as their hopes collapse during the crucifixion. This careful buildup of emotional tension adds depth to the narrative, making the eventual crucifixion a more impactful and emotionally charged moment for viewers. And that's that for today's video. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one. Your suggestions for future videos are always welcome in the comments below.